Hi everyone, Joe for Jaspi's CaseBreaks.com. Check it out, 2022 Bowman Chrome Baseball Hobby Edition. I'm coming at you. Pick your team number 13, all card ship. A lot of great stuff here. Full case, all boxes, all card ship. A lot of good prospect hunting here. Big thanks to everyone here. So Nick, you ended up with Last Spot Mojo. You picked up the last team straight up before we pulled the remaining teams for that filler. And thanks everybody who took a chance on that filler, got into the action that way. That's why you have a little rooftop next to your name. Jacob has two because he won an extra spot in that team random that we did in the previous video. And then got the A's in this one. All right, so let's stick that there. And let's get this one going. Empty box. All right, let's do it. Good luck, everybody. Watching a little Seattle Kraken, LA Kings hockey. 13 goals have been scored already. Everyone had the over on this one, right? Got a minute 30 left in the second period. Seattle 7, Los Angeles 6. Crazy. In case you're wondering, we looked it up before we started this video. The uh, the record the record is 21 total goals. The individual team record might be like 14 or 15 goals. A lot of great stuff in here. A lot of prospect hunting. For a lot of you, you're probably just hanging on to some of these cards, seeing, seeing if these prospects end up being somebody's. Was there a big... I'm sure there was. And these are not numbered, so we'll breeze by these. And Willie Fanas. He's your first autograph, and we'll have an autograph recap at the end. Franklin. Won the Mets in the filler. Wow, Kraken scored another goal. That's 14 total now, 8-6 Seattle. Luis Rodriguez, nice. Magenta, 175 out of 199. That'll go to Casey. Picked up my Dodgers straight up. Also, if you're watching live, we just posted another fresh case of this. So if you miss out on your teams here in this break, um, don't miss out on the next break. And we got a Parker Shavers for Rex and the Cubs. Rex on the board in the first box. 
What's this guy all about? From Montgomery, Alabama, an outfielder, a seventh round pick, top 200 prospect in the MLB draft in both 20 and 21. Says his celebrity fashion, celebrity lookalike is Johnny Tsunami. Carried a three handicap in golf as a teenager. Enjoys outdoors activity. Made the Dean's List. Smart kid here. There you go. Maybe turns into a somebody. Luis Gill, old Gill. 241 out of 250 for the Yankees. Joseph Kavanaugh with that. All right, box one. Hey, don't know any of the... That, that, that's why I kind of love these Bowman products whenever they come out because it's an excuse to start following some of these players and seeing how they do and hopefully they become somebody's. All right, next box. Did Velasquez sign his cards wrong? How do you mean? How, incorrectly? Was it a... I think it's they're all portrait mode cards. Did he, did he put them all like landscape mode? He signed them vertically. Like, so all the cards are shaped like this. You're saying he signed them in landscape mode, right? Whoops. Anything happening in the baseball world? I, th I think it's going to be a little quiet. The hot stove seems to be percolating a little bit, but I think it's going to be a little quiet until uh, until the winter meetings start this week, I want to say. 165 out of 250, Yendry Rojas. That'll be for the Padres. That'll be for Casey. And we got Sedan... Rafa, uh, Rafaela, Rafaela, 88 out of 499 refractor autograph for Boston. That's going to go to Ed and the Red Sox. Won that in the filler. Got a Wander Franco rookie card and a Junior Perez. 115 out of 125. I like that parallel there. Rays, uh, Sean Maddock, you're going to get all those Wander Franco cards. We got Yasser Mercedes for the Twins, Mark. Torkelson rookie card for the Tigers, that'll be for Michael. And Yankel Fernandez. Going to the Rockies, that'll be for Michael. Ooh, the rare redemption coming up. I feel like I haven't seen too many redemptions. 299 Rafael Devers. And a Jeremy Pena for the uh, Astros. That's going to go to Anthony. And the redemption is going to be Bowman Chrome Prospects Autograph. Gavin Tonkel for the Phillies. He usually, I've seen his, a lot of his cards on card. Maybe there are some that he just missed. So that'll go to the Phillies. That'll be for Ramon. Starling Marte gold. Two out of 50 for the Mets. That'll be for Franklin. And that is your one per case. Sometimes we've seen two, but usually it's just one. Marco Luciano. Giants. Jacob with the Giants. All 
All right. Next box. Are they are they really Blue Jays nearing agreement with Don Manley as a bench coach? Don Manley made it seem like he was uh, he was going to take a little time, but guess not. Let me just time away from the Marlins. <laughs> I guess the big news of the week was uh, Jose Abreu signing that three-year deal with the Astros. White Sox signing uh, Mike Clevenger. Twins have reportedly made multiple offers of Carlos Correa. I think these are all news within the last week or so. Jimer Candelario signs a one-year deal with the Nats. Dodgers signed Shelby Miller to a minor league deal. Yeah, nothing really, nothing really crazy there. A lot of teams being in contact with big names. All right, Verlander met with the Dodgers. Darren Judge met with the Giants. Rays have been in contact with Jacob Degrom. I mean, a lot of that. A lot of people being in contact with each other, communicating. Mets to meet with Carlos Rodon. So on and so forth. Right, but I mean, you got to take all of that with a grain of salt. Guess what? Everyone's talking to Aaron Judge. Everyone's talking to Carlos Rodon. We're only hearing of the ones that have been made made public. There's Wander Franco. There's Rosemond Verdugo, 43 out of 99. Green Shimmer, Giants. No Padres. <laughs> Casey with the Padres. Logan, what's going on, man? How are things? And there's a Rosemond Verdugo autograph for Casey. And the Padres. Busy and tired, I can imagine. It's a crazy season for you. Hang in there, man. There's Ezekiel Tovar to 499. Oh, Carlos Rodon from Holly Springs High, high school in Holly Springs, North Carolina, where all of Jonathan Kent's kids went to high school. Nice. Any of your kids playing uh, playing baseball? Following in Carlos Rodon's footsteps? Oh, also, I loaded another case of this, Jonathan, if you want to go grab your team. I know you were asking earlier. I got Willie Fauna, Speckle Autograph, 38 out of 299. Nice, won a 4A state title. Awesome. That's for the Mets. That's for Franklin. Max Scherzer taking it to the max. 48 out of 75 for the Mets. Franklin. Ooh, nice. All right, is there is there going to be a continued future in baseball for some of your kids there? A little college maybe? Oh, decide not to play college baseball. Yeah, it's a it's a it's a, it's a real commitment. One of our guys that worked here for a while, for a couple of years, my friend Thomas, you know, played uh, played some junior college baseball out here um, at El Camino, where I think uh, Marlins' Garrett Cooper went to before he transferred to uh, like Auburn or something like that. And Thomas transferred to uh, Cal State Northridge. Which baseball school wise is pretty decent here in California.
but um, but yeah. So I've talked to him a little bit, and yeah, it's right. Optic proving is tuned without without the added pressure, right? So that's what it's it's yeah. It's hard. It's it's not easy. I mean, that becomes your life. That's it. It's Julio Rodriguez. Julio Rodriguez rookie card for the Mariners. That's going to be for Michael. And nice. Roderick Arias, 13 out of 50. Gold speckle autograph for the Yankees. Joseph Cavanaugh picked up the Bronx Bombers straight up. And is rewarded. Congrats. Got a Drew Baker, 128 out of 499. Refractor. And a Yankil Fernandez for the Rockies. That'll be for Michael. Indeed it is, Logan. Big hit there. Plays Club Ultimate Frisbee now, Jonathan's saying. There's a... There's a, f I want to say there's, there's like pro leagues for that now, right? Like, and like somewhat sophisticated pro leagues that are like, you know, pretty well organized. There's a Jack Herman. Right, yeah, Jackson Curio. Gold in that HTA case was pretty awesome too. Hitting some nice stuff here is Jack Herman, Pirates, Stephen Carney. Got Shane Boz, gold, 9 out of 50. For Sean Maddock and the Rays. All right, third of the case done. I'm gonna work on another third, the middle third. Guess the winter meetings are gonna kick off on Sunday, December fourth. Sunday through Wednesday. And the Rule Five draft will take place on uh, late Wednesday as well. I think that's one where you like you, you can protect X amount of players and blah blah blah. Everyone else is up for grabs. But yeah, reps from every Major League Baseball club is going to go to San Diego. The Marriott Marquis. I've stayed there before. That's a really nice one. Great, uh, great hotel. Right by the marina. Nice restaurant. Nice steakhouse on site. Great pool. A couple huge towers. I'm assuming a lot of conference rooms and stuff in the belly of... The, of of that uh, of that hotel, the convention center is nearby. I'm sure. I'm sure, they can rent some some areas there.
Now maybe I'm uh, maybe I'm just revising history, but in my head I feel like there used to be more deals that were that got done at the winter meetings. And I feel like that's no longer the case, at least in the last handful of years. There's Jorge Barosa. And it'll be for the Diamondbacks. Last spot mojo, Nick Galvin. Last spot mojo strikes again. 70% of the time, last spot mojo hits 100% of the time. It's Josh Lowe. 167 out of 199. But I feel like the winter meetings will come and go, and then like, and then deals will get finalized like a few weeks later or something like that. Right? Isn't that crazy to think that that pitchers and catchers were reporting in like what, two months, three months, maybe December, January, February, basically. It was Luis Robert two eighty two out of four ninety nine? A lot of money will be spent between now and then. There's Daniel uh, McIlvenny, 37 out of 50. Gold auto for Ed P. Got the Red Sox in the filler. There's Roger Arias. And Ronzi Contreras, 62 out of 75. Those seats back there kind of make a, make a cool pattern. That's for the Pirates. That's for Steven. I don't know why I top loaded that. It was just on autopilot there. Our shipping team will, will take care of that. Just sorting and shipping team just in the interest of time here. Logan, you got a lot of snow in your area today. So how how are you handling that? Just you're just trudging through snow, making deliveries happen. Snow sucks. Do you get uh? Are your are your uh, trucks like uh, equipped with anything additional? Do they give you any additional pop the snow tires on? Maybe some chains. Five layers in boots. Hang in there, man. Definitely appreciate the uh, definitely appreciate the letter carriers out there, like you, Lo. You had cables on all day because you're the ones delivering our uh, our Jaspi packages too. We got a deep appreciation of you guys. Actually, this, this reminds me a good public service announcement. As we get closer and closer to the uh... nice, Jonathan. Just wanted to. Yeah, I know you were asking about that earlier. I'm glad you did. Um, as we get, I mean, probably pretty much from now through the end of the year, you know, just be patient with your uh, with the postal service, the letter your your letter carrier. A lot of times, packages will be delayed. It's just what happens every holiday season. It's either going to be delayed. You're going to realize that tracking numbers. You'll check your tracking number and it'll be like it's stuck in L.A. It'll, it'll just be, it'll say it's in Redondo Beach or Hermosa Beach or something like that. With no other updates. You know, even after days of it being sent. There's Cameron Colley, 20 out of 25, Orange Shimmer, Rangers, Matthew. But that's one of the first things that, uh, I mean, the post service gets so busy. That's one of the first things. There's Cho. 123 out of 299, the Korean going to Mark, the Cardinals. Things get so crazy busy that a lot of times, you know, that point-to-point -point tracking that they usually, that they're usually good at, 
that's the first thing that they skip doing just in just to get stuff moving. Kind of bogs them down a little bit. Yeah, tracking numbers are meaningless in December, Logan's saying. You know, there could be weather delays out there too. Blah 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 blah. So just be patient. Some some of you may not notice any you know any sort of delays. Some of you may be like, hey, it seems to be like this is Things are arriving a day or two later than I usually am used to from Jaspies, so just keep that in mind. Appreciate your patience. Jacob with the Giants. We got Brett Beatty. 137 out of 150. Atomic Parallel. Arizona Fall League insert for New York. That's going to be for Franklin and the Mets. There's Christian Vaccaro for Sean Maddock and the Nationals. We got Jason Curio for Cleveland. That's for Ed. Look out for his brother Jackson as well on the Brewers. All right, another box. Looking at a list of uh, free agents on MLBTradeRumors.com, can't really say there's really the monster names are really in the shortstop section, right? I mean, there's some other solid players out there, but really, Xander Bogarts, Carlos Correa, Dansby Swanson, Trey Turner, and then of course Aaron Judge. And Degrom and Carlos Rodon, but aside, but, but position player wise, there really isn't anyone too crazy outside of Aaron Judge and and the shortstops. Wilson Contreras. I, th I think you <laughs> it's, you think that's a bigger name than than he really is. I don't think he's quite up to those levels of those shortstops or Aaron Judge. Nice Christian Vaccaro, sixty four out of ninety nine. Nice one for the Nats, Sean Maddock. It's <laughs> I thought of you, Rex, over over my dinner break because I was reading an article on the Athletic. And I was talking about free agents, 69 out of 199, Max Scherzer for the Mets. And there was another Cubs fan who was talking about talking up Wilson Contreras and the five other comments below it from non-Cubs fans were like, I can't believe how Cubs fans, they all overrate, you know, Wilson Contreras so much. And I was like, I know a guy like that. There's Jose Rodriguez, 69 out of 100. That goes to Texas. That'll be from Matthew Shira, Bryson Stott. That's from Vegas. It's for the Phillies. That's going to go to Ramon. James Wood to 250. Oh, and then Oscar Colas. That's your uh, that's your one per case situation there. Wait, didn't we get one earlier? 
No, maybe the... Oh, yeah, we did. We got a Marco Luciano, and we got, we got a second one. Oscar Colas, White Sox. That's going to be for Mark. All right, another one. I think the Astros might go for Wilson Gutierrez. Offensively, catching was a bit of a black hole for them on that team. Not that that, not that, that lineup needs the help, but that is a, uh, a spot where they can improve significantly with a Wilson Gutierrez addition. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, the Cardinals, without Yachty, they could use a Contreras. But yeah, then Rex, as a Cubs fan, is like, I don't want to have to root for Willis Contreras. Cardinals edition. It's Joe Adele for the Angels to four ninety nine. Joe Adele going to Joe Pizzle. Joe P. We got a redemption it's for the Padres. Harlan Susana. Bowman Chrome Prospects autograph. Who's got the Friars? Casey with the Padres. There's Nolan Arenado to 250. For Mark and the Cardinals. So Bobby Wood Jr. Rex, I know you mentioned Yankees as a landing spot for Wilson Contreras. I wonder, I wonder if uh, I think they're going. I think they probably would f want to figure out what they're what they're doing with Aaron Judge, and if they're out of the Aaron Judge sweepstakes, then I would think they would turn their focus to to just spreading that potential Aaron Judge money around to a bunch of different positions. Is Ian Lewis? The Marlins, Anthony. Bobby Wood Jr. Aqua, Lava Parallel, 57 out of 199. Nice. Yeah, these parallels, that's the kind of stuff I've been looking for. Lonnie with the Royals. This is, here's Rex's favorite player, Say Suzuki. He's going to be in the Hall of Fame someday, says Rex. Well, now that, now that they have... Final third of the case, by the way. Now that they have uh, Rizzo, you know, I don't know what Rizzo's relationship is with Wilson Contreras, but 
Thompson. I'm sure they got each other's numbers. I'm sure they'll be, I'm sure Anthony Rizzo maybe texting Wilson and being like, hey. Not so bad here. We've got a winning team here. Can hang out again. This hockey game has stalled out at 8-6, Kraken. 12 minutes left in the uh, third period. Well, now let's go for the W, Kings. Got Evan Lee. Sean Maddock and the Washington Nationals. Hey, we were just talking about Wilson Contreras, and there he is. Here's Christian Vaccaro. Saw his autograph earlier. That's going to go to Sean Maddock. Here's Wilson Contreras. Green parallel, 21 out of 99. Ranked seventh among catchers in home runs in 2021. That's what the uh, little power from the catching spot is what a team like the Astros could use. He catches a decent game too. And there he is. And a Cubs auto, Speckle auto, Liam Spence, 253 out of 299. That's for Rex and his Cubbies. There you go, Rex. From Australia, Rex, fifth round pick. An Aussie. Liam Spence. Li Liam. <laughs> Li Liam? Liam? I don't, know, I, don't, I don't have I don't have that. I don't have that accent. Lamb. Bit of a baseball player. Knife. That's not a knife. This is a knife. There's a Hemsworth, right? Liam, there's a Liam Hemsworth? Hemsy. All right, Hemsy. Liam. I just have to, have to, I just have to see how, how Chris says his brother's name. There's a, I don't know why, this popped in my head. Ran across a funny little, uh, funny little video of Woody Harrelson and Liam Hemsworth doing a presser for what movie? What movie would Woody Harrelson and Liam Hemsworth? What movie would they be in? Why would they be doing a press conference together? The two of them are sitting next to each other. It's like one of those classic ones where they're sitting next to their movie posters on their interviewer on the other chair. I don't remember, but for whatever reason they were talking, the interviewer mentioned Liam's brother and blah, blah, blah. And 
And old stoner Woody Harrelson looks over to Liam Hemsworth and goes, I didn't know you had a brother. And he's like, yeah, Woods, I told you. I told you about my family. <laughs> I was, like, I was like, yeah, Chris, Chris, right. I had no idea. It's really funny. Follow-up interviews have, have had Liam say he definitely knew. He just had blanked in, at that moment for whatever reason. There's Brian Acuna, Ronald's brother, 200 out of 250. Speaking of brothers. And Jojo Blackman, Rangers, Matthew. Matthew Shirah with that one. He's from Pensacola. So O'Neill Cruz, Anthony Volpe. Speaking of uh, Pensacola, uh, I just saw, is that a 125 Anthony Volpe? There you go, Kings. 8-7 now. Uh, everyone remember the, the Pepsi commercial where for X amount of points, they were going to give away, uh, you can submit it for a Harrier jet. Remember those Harriers? They, they can fly up and down and back and forth. And off, it's like a helicopter, except it's a fighter jet. It's pretty awesome. Now, I don't know how old this documentary is, but I just ran to it on Netflix the other day, over the weekend, actually, a few days ago. Yendry Rojas, Rojas, 113 out of 150, going to San Diego. That'll be for Casey. And it was about how some kid in Seattle um, had figured out a way to get the requisite amount of uh, points to get a Harrier. Like three or four episodes. I thought it was pretty fun. 22 out of 299. James Wood. I think Crystal Pepsi was one of them, but the documentary seems to suggest you could buy any kind of Pepsi. Any Pepsi product. So some of you, if you look up that old commercial, for some people of a, if you're of a certain age and you and you look up this commercial for Pepsi points from the 90s, I think uh, I think you'll remember it. But the kid found a uh, found a workaround. I don't know. It's a pretty fascinating documentary. But pretty much he had found a workaround. The TV commercial did not have a disclaimer on there. And it said 7 million, 7 million I think it was what the number was. Pepsi points. You get a Harrier jet. Nice, King scored again. They tied it, 8-8. Eight, eight. What a game. That's nuts. There's still six minutes left in the game. This is not over yet. But apparently there was a catalog, Pepsi Points catalog. And if you, if you flip through the catalog in the back, there was like, you know, to submit for any prize, you can just do... Uh, you can just have at least 15 points, and then you could buy a point for like 10 cents. Right, sort of a no purchase, almost a pseudo no purchase necessary sort of transaction. So I think it worked out to be less than a million dollars. I think $700,000 or whatever. James Wood, ooh, piece of candy, going to Casey and the Padres. And there's Jaden Rudd. Blue Jays, Stephen Carney, Bluebirds. 
And if you look up the cost of a Harrier, <laughs> which I think at the time was like $50 million or something like that. There's Alec Bohm to 199. You can see that how it would be a, uh, that would be a return. Then of course there was the argument of, can, you, can a civilian even own a jet? a fighter jet. I think you can if it's been decommissioned or demilitarized or something like that. If like the Harrier was out of service or whatever. I think it was still in service at the time. There's Alec Thomas. But you definitely can't have any ordinance with it. All right, well, right. Spoiler alert, Rex saying he never got the jet. But it went through a number of uh, went through a number of settlement type situations and court situations. There's Luis Chevalier for Seattle, there's Michael with that one. I think he ultimately, there's Ezekiel Tovar. Ultimately, I think he actually let the case go. I think he ended up dropping it because I think he was gonna keep pursuing it I think there maybe there were some lawsuits filed, maybe some appearances made, but I think then eventually he ended up maybe settling or just dropping it or something like that. Right, Pepsi say he couldn't have it because it was a joke. Right, but the, the the interesting argument and what's funny is that this case apparently. One of the, they interviewed, it was a great documentary because they, they interviewed all the marketing executives, Pepsi executives, they even, uh, even interviewed a, a Harrier pilot. They interviewed the, the person himself who's now much older um, and was, was, he's just like, I, that's such a weird part of my life that I don't even think about anymore. But they, one of the Pepsi marketing executives at the time who was interviewed said that his son ended up in college and, and then they was being taught in, in his law school that he was at. So it's reached kind of that sort of argument because it's a very interesting case that could be could be debated, right? Yeah, because it's ultimately a false advertising case. And so Pepsi was saying, so the ar argument is seven million points plus the 10 cent point kind of thing, you know, makes it seem like it's attainable, you know? So they're suggesting it wasn't a joke. Canadian versions of the commercial actually had disclaimers. American versions didn't. In subsequent commercials, they jacked it up from 7 million points to 70 million points to 700 million points. Right? So, you know, maybe, you know, that, that's not an admission of guilt, but you kind of see maybe they thought, oh, maybe we did screw up a little bit. Let's try to paper this over. But the 7 million point level made it seem potentially attainable, thus getting kids to buy a Pepsi or asking their, their parents to buy a Pepsi. You know, so this is, this is kind of like average. So the, the ethical or the legal issue is this is being marketed to a Pepsi generation, a younger generation of kids who may not be as, you know, adults maybe be like, all right, whatever. You know, that's clearly a joke. But for a kid pushing their parents to buy Pepsi, you know, it's powerful advertising. Anthony Astros and Michael Garcia to 299. Autograph for the Royals, Lonnie. So yeah, so it brings up a lot of interesting issues. I think ultimately the 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 uh, and ultimately Pepsi had also done some shady stuff in a contest in the Philippines where they said that they like it was a cap contest so you open up a, i don't have a cap near me but you would open up a cap and on the on the other side of the cap there'd be like a number and like you can win x amount of dollars and so apparently they had misprinted some of these bottle caps that had like a number and then it was like a million dollars you know and and in a country like the Philippines, which, you know, definitely has more, you know, economic disparities than the United States did in the 90s. Like, that was a big deal. A lot of people buying Pepsi. 
Pepsi got a huge Coke. It was all Coca Cola. Yeah, the three four nine scam. Yeah, Logan remembers. It wasn't so much as a scam as as, as so as much it was a printing mistake. gave a, gave a lot got a lot of people to buy their product, eat into Coca Cola market share, and then they really didn't do right by it. You know, the, they just said sorry, we're not paying out anything. So there were riots, like you know, people were rioting and. All sorts of crazy stuff. That, that could be a whole documentary in of itself. There's Yosar Garcia to 150. So they, they got interviews from that. The, the document I'm talking about also had interviews with people from the Philippines. It was pretty amazing. Some of these, pe some of these people had still kept like the cap. You know, and they just, they remember it with, you know, as, as, as a dark part of that sort of time. One wonders if Pepsi you know, kind of knew what they were doing. I think they, they yeah. So it's interesting. A lot, a lot of interesting things. The advertising world, a little, uh, little amazing, a little dirty. Well, always interesting. Pick your team 13 in the books, ladies and gentlemen. Thanks for hanging out and breaking with us. A lot of nice stuff here. Appreciate everybody getting in. We did add another full case break. No filler yet. There's nice Christian Vaccaro. No filler yet, so grab as many teams as possible. Roderick Arias, too. A lot of great stuff. Thanks for watching, everyone. Thanks for, thanks for chatting, hanging out with me, too, keeping me company. Pick your team 13 in the books. I'm Joe, and I'll see you next time for the next break. Bye-bye.